I have to keep removing plates until I get to the one I want. I say, oh, that's the plate I wanted to either alter or I want to put a plate from um, a different plate into the stack, which is basically like inserting it. So to insert an element into the stack, we would essentially have to take off all of these plates here, remove all the ones until we find out where we want to insert one on top of, insert the plate we wanted to back in, then put in all the plates that we removed back on top of the stack. Okay, and that's how you would do an insert method, which is obviously very inefficient because it doesn't make sense for us to have to remove all of these plates to get to where we wanted to remove or where we wanted to insert something, remove maybe a 50 or 100 or 1,000 plates just to insert one into the middle. Okay, so generally stacks aren't used where we have a lot of insertions. If you wanted to be able to insert objects easily, that is why we would choose something like a linked list. Okay, so choosing what type of data structure you're going to be wanting to use in a certain program is dependent on how it's being used. So if you're going to have to insert a lot of objects, a stack data structure is not going to be very useful. But if you are not using and doing a lot of insertions, and you're only adding a lot, and maybe it's only temporary or just holding some elements, then certainly a stack would work. Okay, and we saw the example with postfix mathematics, which would be the equivalent then of seeing expressions that are written like this, where the things you're adding are the two elements before our operator. Okay, so in this example, I'm just going to go ahead and add a couple other numbers. So if we had um, something like that, and a multiplication, in postfix, the way the computer would read it, and this is important because postfix means we don't need to use brackets. And the reason this example is used a lot is because computers can't really read brackets. They can't interpret reading a whole expression. So they generally, in terms of the actual processor, read it in postfix notation. So what this looks like if we read it into a stack is we would add the 5 to the stack, then we would add the 3 to the stack, the 4, and then we would add the addition. Our program would then check and say, oh, hey, look, I have, I have an addition, an operator, followed by two numbers. At that point, it would pop off my operator and my four and my three. And it would perform the operation of four plus three. And then what it would do is it would push the answer, the result, back on to my stack. So I would still have my 5. It would push the 7 on it. Okay. At that point, I would go back to reading in my equation up here. And the next thing I would read in is my multiplication would go on top of the stack. Again, this time, just like before, we would have to, we would pop off once we saw the operator and the numbers below it, we would pop them all off and perform the result. Okay, so we would pop these all off, perform the result, put it back in, and get a result. And once our stack only contains one element, then we would know that we've performed all of our calculations and because we've also read in all of our operators. 
Okay? So we notice in this example we didn't have to do insertions. We were adding things and then we would pop and we would put them back in and it worked out very well for us. So there are times when a stack data structure is useful, but we have to be wary of the things that, how we're going to be using it. Like I said, insertions are really poor. They're really inefficient at being done on that stack.